Hi, Fabio. Hey, Brandon. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Good. I have this pretty uh, interesting stereo EEG case. I think it's the first stereo EEG in our show. They're complicated. Another ATL? Yeah, I think so. Because actually, it's pretty straightforward. There's, um, I don't think I'm going to present a surgical conference because it's so easy, you know? Oh, no. Well, let's see. Is this, is this a left-sided seizure we're seeing? It is. Yeah. So let me just... Um, let me just uh, localize you here. So the hippocampus, the hippocampal head is, is this, this set of uh, context here, this depth, and then mm -hmm. hippocampal tail. Yep. Uh, but it's actually coming nicely from the deep context of the hippocampal head and tail. So it's a yeah. hippocampal seizure. Is this a, a right-handed patient? Yeah, it is a right-handed. What, what do you, what do you ask? Well, I'm, I'm just want, trying to see what the risks are of a left ATL and uh, what we need to, if that's the only option or not. <laughs> I think it's the only option, right? I don't know. I, there's a. I've heard about uh, out in out in the wild, the wilds of Canada, mm -hmm. some physicians who have alternative approaches. So oh, interesting. <laughs> oh wait, there's there's somebody here. Oh, who is this? Oh, it's Alex. Dr. Alex, wildest neurosurgeon in Canada. We're so excited. Oh, uh, welcome. <laughs> can you teach us a little bit about um, another procedure that we can use here, Alex? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. Fortunate to have another technology at my disposal here in Canada, which is laser ablation, MR guided mm -hmm. laser interstitial therapy. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly, this is a, a potentially appealing alternative for your case. Interesting. Oh, so is that the lit? that they talk about that's lit exactly huh. what does lit stand for i i never it, know what the acronym means because it's so good it's like lit you know <laughs> oh yeah <It's> lit. <laughs> yeah lit. you can add some fire emojis next to that uh so, so the, the most commonly used term is mr Audio will <laughs> mrg mr guided laser interstitial laser therapy huh. what would be the sort of indications for for it, you know, when, when would you do a lit in, instead of an ATL? And mm -hmm. uh, an initial discussion is, do we carry out a amygdala hippocampectomy or do we do an anteromesial temporal lobectomy? And then the next question is, do you do a lit selective amygdala hippocampectomy or an open one? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you've decided that a selective procedure is is appropriate uh, and, and the full sort of on block resection is not needed, then then you can start debating, well, lit or open procedure. Right. Uh, as we all know, uh, anterior temporal lobectomy, uh, while you know, we have level one evidence based on uh, well-designed randomized trials, 70% you know, of patients uh, are seizure-free. Uh, mm -hmm. However, um, this surgery does come at uh, cost of their uh, neurological impairment, particularly visual field deficit uh, or cognitive impairment. The most common uh, you know, cognitive uh, um, impairments being difficulties with language, mainly naming uh, or, um, uh, or memory impairment. So of course, uh, you know, uh, left, left hemisphere language dominant MTLE patients will have uh, issues with verbal memory, about 30% rate, and then right-sided will have uh, non-verbal verbal memory impairment. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not not always, it's not so clear cut. Uh, you can have right side, right hemisphere patients with verbal and vice versa. But, but the most common neurological impairment after anteromerial temporal lobectomy is visual field uh, deficit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, of course, uh, injury to Myers loop of the optic radiations can cause a superior uh, uh, quadrant, quadrantinopsia. Mm -hmm. Long winded answer to say, based on all of this, uh, of course, uh, one of the uh, pioneering neurosurgeons, uh, Yazergil, developed a selective approach to treating MTLE, meaning a selective amygdala hippectomy. And despite our best efforts to resect, you know, the uh, seizure onset zone, which is usually uh, uh, limited to the uh, mesial structures, amygdala hippocampus, and several extra, extra hippocampal, hippocampal mesial structures, namely the parahippocampal gyrus. Mm -hmm. Despite our best efforts to resect these structures through various avenues, mm -hmm. so you, know, you can see in this image, you know, a transylvian approach, transtemporal approach, or more more recent approaches or variations of the approach, subtemporal or supracerebral or transtemporal approaches. Um, even our uh, our open selective approaches for carrying out amygdala hippocampectomy do not significantly reduce 
uh, uh, post-operative cognitive impairment, whether it be naming, whether it be uh, verbal or nonverbal uh, memory impairments or, or other uh, cognitive deficits. And the reason for that is because despite our best efforts, mm -hmm. each of these approaches um, is associated with collateral damage. So, so that's, that's where, where, lit, where lit comes in, it sounds like. is So th that does, I'm, I'm, assu I'm, uh, I'm anticipating that that actually has better or lower complication rate. I'm not convinced yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that is where lit comes in, right? With lit, you can, tr you can ablate th those regions and, and thermally ablate and destroy mm -hmm. while avoiding the approach-related morbidity Oh, uh, that's lit. Uh, <laughs> and is, is its efficacy pretty similar to um, SAH? The efficacy is similar, but slightly reduced. So okay. you, there's a trade-off. So you're, yeah. you're obtaining minimally invasive benefits, specifically the patient, you know, it's a small incision, reduced pain, reduced uh, uh, length of hospitalization. Patients mm -hmm. can leave one day after surgery. They don't, in our center at least, they don't go, need to go to ICU. Yeah. Uh, proper narcotic use, quicker return to daily activities, mm -hmm. it's a four millimeter incision. Um, and so there's a clear, it's a minimally invasive procedure and those are clear benefits to the patient mm -hmm. uh, and to the hospital. So LIT has the benefits of uh, reduced collateral damage, mm -hmm. reduced rate of visual field deficit and uh, in, uh, certain cognitive functions are preserved as a result. But the trade-off is that there's a slightly reduced efficacy mm -hmm. compared to open uh, approaches. So the best way to explain uh, the technique for LIT is, to, to, is, is a video, right? So oh. laser probe, of course, it has to be accurately placed in the, in, uh, the epileptogenic foci. So mm -hmm. that's done with uh, stereotaxy. Um, of course, frameless stereotaxy is an option, but most cases, and certainly MTLE cases, we use frame-based stereotaxy, which is uh, sort of a neurosurgery, the gold standard to have an accurate placement of a, of a probe. And so you see us putting on the frame here. What's mm -hmm. so important to, to note is we've already obtained a pre-operative MRI uh, for the patient. So um, we've planned out uh, our uh, entry site and our trajectory and our target pre-operatively on a pre-operative MRI. Mm -hmm. And then on the day of surgery, the patient is placed in the frame and brought to CT scan. And mm -hmm. we obtain what's called a frame-based CT scan. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you can see the patient here in the CT scanner. And then once we have that, we fuse the, the intraoperative uh, frame-based CT to the preoperative MRI. This patient had a giant hypothalamic hematoma, mm -hmm. but of course you could envision a, an MTLE case. Once we've fused these two uh, scans together, mm -hmm. we verify our trajectory. Mm -hmm. Of course, this case was a different trajectory. It's a hematoma, but you can see uh, we, we're verifying our planned trajectory. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once we're uh, satisfied with that, we go on to surgery. And you can see it's a pretty straightforward procedure. Um, a lot of, there is a learning curve, a lot of little steps, uh, but I'm sure if uh, Fabio came to Montreal, uh, I would have no problem letting him uh, assist me and carrying out the steps. It's, oh, yeah. it's, it's not so much the technique that's challenging, but um, you know the pre-surgical planning and the patient selection and and understanding the technology. So you can see here the really the minimally invasive benefits. Um, you know, we don't, we part the hair, we don't shave. You can see here the incision, the stab incision, four millimeters. Uh, it's a twist drill. Here we are, once we've drilled our pinhole into the skull and perforated the dura, uh, we enter the uh, bolt. Mm -hmm. Once the bolt is placed there tactically, um, the next step is to uh, uh, place the laser fiber. Um, and this is what you'll see here. We have an intra-op MRI now, so um, uh, the, the MR is brought into the, the OR, but in many centers, uh, the patient is brought from the OR to, an MR, to the MR suite, which can be on another floor. And so the laser pr probe is inserted in the target. What, what's uh, controlling the movement of that probe? This is the Monterra system of the two systems. And this system, actually, what you're seeing here is the robotic arm. Um, Brendan likes robots. Hello. That's Roll up and lasers. Yeah. 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 So there's all the things, you know, if you're into sci-fi, this is the surgery for you. <laughs> yes. but, um, you actually manually insert the probe through the bolt um, uh, and with very precise calculations, obviously, for in terms of uh, the length to place it in. Mm -hmm. And the system is you know, well-equipped to be accurate in that sense. Um, 
but once it's manually placed in the target, uh, you can advance it or withdraw it with the robot, with the system that, that, that I'm showing here in Monteris. The other system, which is the visual aid system, you, you actually have to manually go into the MR suite during ablation and move it forward and backwards manually. And then once it's, the probe is inside the target, mm -hmm. the patient is brought to the MR. Once the patient is in the MR, mm -hmm. then you're obtaining uh, MR in images and you're actually in the control room beside the patient. So you're, you're operating the patient from a different room. And in this case, uh, which is a hammer toma, you can see uh, our, on the software, uh, the probe in the target. And the first image you get is a T1 volumetric uh, MR, which is gonna be your anatomical views. And then they'll reconstruct that on the software into three slices. Mm -hmm. And I'll just let that play. And you can see us here using the robot actually withdrawing it. And here's an animation to show, um, you know, just sort of the ablation that you can get. So, so you're, you're, the, the patient's in the, now in the magnet, mm -hmm. the laser is in your target. And the first thing you do is you get your T1 volumetric scan, reconstruct, mm -hmm. and that'll allow you to monitor on three planes. The T1 proton spin echo images are acquired. Mm -hmm. And on the software, that's where the whole MR thermometer uh, thermometry technology allows you mm -hmm. to see uh, thermal maps and damage estimates, meaning uh, you'll see irreversible damage estimates, mm -hmm. uh, which in this case will be blue and reversible damage estimates, which will be yellow. And so that allows you in real time to monitor the damage you're causing. Mm -hmm. And, and depending on the software, you can also monitor uh, eloquent structures you want to preserve. So vi vi uh, visual pathways or various eloquent structures. Blue is irreversible damage. What's important is I've traced out uh, the optic pathway here. That's in pink. Yeah. So then I click to say, what's the reversible damage estimate? And then it shows me that. And so I go back and forth mm. and look at the yellow. So there I know I'm causing thermal damage, but it's not irreversible yet. And how do yeah. I, and right. And so and so I'm, I'm happy there because in this case, I'm treating what I want to treat, but I'm encroaching the optic pathway. So I'm going to be careful. Mm -hmm. And then I click it. I click the setting to show myself the irreversible. Uh, irreversible. That's an estimate, right? So then you might yeah. say, well, how do I see what I'm actually causing in terms of damage? T1 gadolinium enhanced uh, MR scan uh, will show ring enhancing, gadolinium ring enhancing lesion that will delimit the outer border of what you've ablated. And oh. so during an ablation and certainly after I will get a T1 with, with gadolinium. So I'll do a half dose GAD injection and that will show me the area of ablated. An MTLE case, which can show you the, mm -hmm. the orientation of the fiber, the approach, which is a posterior occipital approach coming down the long axis of the mesial structures. And you can see in this case, right? So what kind of thermal map is that? Is that reversible or irreversible? It's yellow. It's so, reversible. Wow, beautiful. Yeah. So you can see where their yeah. ablation is happening there. Yeah.